Praise the Lord. Shalom. Welcome to another video from the series Know the Lord, Your God, in which we are meditating on the names of the Lord. This video is the fourth video in the series. There is already an introduction video and two other videos in which we have meditated on the names of the Lord. In case you have missed watching them, I would encourage you to go ahead and watch them. The link of those videos will be given in the description box. In the Bible, it says that God's name alone is exalted high above the heaven and the earth and we must give the glory which is due to his name, the glory which his name deserves. In Psalm 135 verse 1 it says, Praise the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise him O you servants of the Lord. The name of the Lord which we are going to meditate today is El Olam which means everlasting God. First, let us see a few facts and figures about the name El Olam. El means God, Olam means eternal or everlasting. This name describes the eternal nature of God. The concept of time does not apply to God. God is beyond time and beyond space. That is why Jesus says, I am the first, I am the last, I am the beginning and the end, I am the Alpha and the Omega. God is an everlasting God who always was, who is and who is to come. The word Olam, which means eternal, everlasting, forever, that appears in the Bible almost 400 times. However, the name El Olam appears only four times in the Bible. And the first time that we come across this name is in Genesis chapter 21 verse 33, where Abraham makes a covenant with Abimelech. And there, as a sign of the covenant, he plants a tamarisk tree. At that time, he calls upon the name of the Lord as El Olam, the everlasting God. Now, what role does God as El Olam, as the everlasting God, play in our lives? Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy before you. Firstly, God is the refuge for his children. Whenever you are in trouble, whenever you are in danger, you can run to the Lord and He will protect you and guide you. Many times when things go wrong or when difficult situation comes, we run to our family, we run to our friends, we run to our well-wishers. Well, there is nothing wrong in running to them, but remember to run to the Lord first. Remember to run to the Lord even before you run to people. Tell him what the problem is. Tell him what difficulty you're going through. Keep him in charge and in control of the situation. That is why Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Secondly, in the same verse, Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27, it says, Underneath are the everlasting arms. Underneath us, the Lord's everlasting arms are carrying us, they are holding us, just as a father carries his son. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 11 it says, Just as an eagle stirs up its nest and later carries its young ones on its wings, God also carries his children like that. When a mother eagle stirs up the nest, she removes all the soft wool, feather and the soft leaves that it used to construct the nest so that all that is left is the prickly sticks. The nest which was once soft and cozy is now a bed of discomfort and restlessness. Why is she doing this to her children? Because she is preparing them to fly. Sometimes God allows change in our lives. Sometimes God allows us to go through difficult situations. The purpose of it is not to show our weakness, but to discover our strength. So do not lose your heart. Have faith in God and He will help you to soar like an eagle. Well, if you still have that question, how can I make God as my refuge and how can I believe that the Lord's arms are beneath me and carrying me? Here is a story. 
During the World War II, after an intense fight between the Japanese and the US on Okinawa, a US Marine got separated from his unit. There were explosions, smoke and chaos of the battle. This Marine was left all alone in the hills in the dangerous territory of the enemy. As the sun was setting, he heard the enemy soldiers approaching him, so he took refuge in one of the caves that were in the ridge. This man thought that in just a matter of time, the enemies would approach his cave and find him. That is when he prayed. He said, Lord, if it is your will, please protect me. Whatever be your will though, I love you Jesus and I trust in you. Then he observed a spider building a web, weaving strand by strand over the crawling entrance of the cave. This man thought to himself, what I need is a brick wall, but what God sent is a spider's web. Well, this man was still and quiet because the enemy soldiers were approaching his cave. But to his surprise, the soldiers did not enter into his cave, they just passed by. Then he realized that the spider's web was actually a sign to the enemy soldiers that no one has entered into the cave. It did not occur to the enemy soldiers that the web would have been weaved after the marine got inside the cave. He then prayed again. He said, Lord, I am sorry. I forgot that in you, even a spider's web is as strong as a brick wall. Later, he waited for that area to be cleared and then he joined back with his fellow soldiers. Dear children of God, remember that there is no situation in which God cannot help you. There is no place that God cannot be with you. He is an everlasting God who is not bound by time or space and He has promised to be with you till the end of the age. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with your family and friends. Your feedback and comments are always welcome. You can also send in your prayer requests at the WhatsApp number scrolling down. We shall pray for you. Subscribe to our channel and I will see you in my next video. Thank you. God bless you.